welcome to the DL, the podcast show that talks about everything to do with truck repair and diagnostics for the heavy truck and construction industry. I am your host, Tyler Robertson, CEO and founder of Diesel Laptops. Welcome to the DL. I'm your host, Tyler Robertson, and I'm here today with someone I met last year, and her name is Liz. So Liz, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited. So this is a little bit different because this isn't completely in the trucking industry world, but I can tell you I have some problems and I think you're going to be able to help me with them. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what you do and what your company is. Yeah, I have a company called Pain Talks, and I started this business about two years ago. I'm actually a physical therapist and um, since 2006, but I decided a couple of years ago to try to promote more prevention rather than just treating injuries, but preventing them from starting. So that's what I do. Yeah. So I, mean, I think the whole thing that you mentioned to me with physical therapist is the fact that by the time people come to you, it's already too, it's late. too late. It's an it's an injury that's happened. Yeah. And your whole goal with Pain Talks is to get ahead of it. Yeah. And you're really focused on helping businesses with that particular thing. Right. So one of the things that intrigued me when I when I first met you was I know I sit horribly, and you're probably already sitting here critiquing how I'm sitting and everything. <laughs> yeah. And I and I know you've commented on some stuff online <laughs> how I sit, which is great. Um, but it, it, you know, now that I've hit forty, I can definitely tell. You know, I got like this carpal tunnel thing going on when I'm typing. I, my back hurts me every once in a while from right. sitting too much. And I think a lot of people don't pay attention to how they sit. Yeah. And what I've realized now, and I, I've kind of got this tracker app now on my phone where I, I kind of yeah. keep track of you know what I eat and what I Good. do and everything. I didn't realize how much I sit and how little I walk. <laughs> so I think it would probably yeah. surprise a lot of people to figure out if they actually right. kept track of how much of their day they spend sitting or laying in a bed. It's a big portion of their time. A lot. Or if they're sitting, uh, maybe reclining to watch TV at night or on the computer. Yep. So you have a little bit of a unique background here, right? Because you're a part-time physical therapist. Yeah. But you're also you're also a wife, you're also a mom, and you're also an entrepreneur, right? And you got you have a full load going I'm on. Then. Yeah, yeah. Well, how many kids do you have? I have five kids. They're a little. Yep. And then, yeah. What, what are the ages? They are um, two, four, seven, nine, and ten. Yep. So you're a full time mom. Um, yes. You got the part time thing going on. You got the entrepreneur thing going on. Yes. Of course, you're a wife as well. How, how do you juggle that time? That's got to be tough. Well, I. Last night, for example, like I, at the end of the day, it was 930 at night and I sat down and I told my husband, I was like, I just feel like I have five full time jobs. <laughs> like I'm just tired, you know, because I worked my part time job and then I did networking for my business. And then I came home and cooked supper and fed the children and gave them baths and put them to bed. Um, and had to wash the dishes, sweep the floor. So it's a lot. <laughs> I don't know how I keep up. I can't. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have the, I have very similar problems. I, I think a lot of people kind of see the, you know, the iceberg, it's above the water. They see that part and they don't see everything going on underneath and behind the scenes that, that takes to really make this work. Yeah. Um, and you're starting to learn some of that stuff as being an entrepreneur with a new business. Yeah. Um, how, how has that been going? Like what are some big lessons you've learned now as an entrepreneur or things you've didn't realize that it would take to, to get a business going? It takes a lot of work. I mean, more than I realized, um, entrepreneurs like you who give me advice have said it's, you know, it's a lot of work. You just got to hustle. You got to work, work, work. Um, but, you know, I can make 10 calls, um, sales calls and try to get somebody to, you know, call me back. And you, know, you may not get a return phone call or I can, you know, network with 100 people and maybe only one of them is actually can help me with my business. So um, I think you just have to kind of persevere through the first, hopefully, years and that it'll grow. Yeah. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs that come up with a new product or new idea or want to do something, at the end of the day, what you really become is a salesperson. Like yeah. you, you got to go out and sell yourself yeah. to these people. And that's a, that's a tough skill set. There's, there's, I don't know if there's a such thing as a natural born salesperson. Yeah, um, I'm not, I'm not a natural yeah, salesperson, not me. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not either. I, I just, you know, I got lucky because I was in a super niche market and people needed our products and services. And I just knew them really well, but I, I had yeah. no idea how to close. I had no idea what to say. Yeah. I, I got really lucky. 
how have you gone through that trying to figure out how to get a hold of people and, and what to say? You mentioned the networking thing. I mean, yeah. you found me on LinkedIn, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how, how have you been going about it? And you're more you're more of a local yeah. regional thing well, than yeah, what because we do. it's just me right now. Um I do have a contractor now. Oh sweet. as of like a few days ago. Cool. <laughs> so I'm growing in that sense. Um I cold call. I, I do not like sales. I'm not good at marketing and sales and cold calling, but I actually cold call, and that's how I got my first client. Um, I cold called. Now, this was uh, the factory of somebody that somebody knew. So I think my husband was like, why don't you try this factory? He knew somebody that had worked there in the past. So I cold called them and said, hey, who's your safety manager? And then actually he answered the phone. So that was, I guess yeah. I got lucky at the beginning. And had I not gotten a client right away, I, I may not have continued because you could cold call for months and not get anything. And it, it's tough because it's not just... So what we always tell our salespeople is don't expect someone to interact with us on the first touch. And for a touch for us is a phone call, a trade show, an email campaign, a website visit, a mm -hmm. social media post. It's tough. No one usually, the first time you introduce them, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll buy your product. It's it's a process. So yeah. it can be difficult. And we did one of our other podcast episodes. I've done a couple of them with uh, one of our salespeople, David Martin. Um, we did another one with our with William Ward, who's now our national yeah. accounts manager. And it's it's tough out there to get people get people's attention. Everyone's just yeah. busy all the time. So I know you're doing a lot of networking stuff, which is great. And I, I think for any entrepreneur out there, it's just a matter of shotgun approach at first. Figure out what works, yeah. what doesn't. Um, have you been able to kind of target and zone in on who your ideal clients are now through this process? Well, I've always known that manufacturing would be a good route um, because my husband's an engineer. He's in manufacturing. So um, he's told me enough about it that they do have safety initiatives and safety budgets. Um, I have tried to reach out to hospital groups or um, you know tech companies or construction companies, but I've had more, I guess, luck getting calls back from manufacturing. So that might be my target. Yeah. Um so on the note, so so that's who you are. Let's talk a little yeah. bit about what you do. Okay. All right. So what kind of intrigued me when you came to see me is your timing was impeccable because you know, I hit I hit 40 now. And mm -hmm. you know, so what started happening a couple of years ago, I started having like this carpal tunnel, like my wrists were hurting all the time, just like yeah. this pain in them. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And and finally, you know, I'm wearing wrist guards at night and you yeah. know, doing all kinds of stuff. But I do a lot of typing, mm -hmm. and I sit at my desk a lot of times. Right. So if I look at just the carpal tunnel side of it, yeah. What what do you see there, and what what okay. causes that for people to have that problem? Well, carpal tunnel is mainly when you have pinched nerves going on in the wrist. But honestly, a lot of patients is coming from their neck, and they wow. have a pinched nerve in their neck, and um, or pinched nerves on both sides, and then it causes symptoms to go down both arms. So we see that a lot in the clinic where somebody comes in for therapy, and they say, my doctor tells me, or whoever tells me that I have carpal tunnel, and then I always have to clear the spine first to make sure there's no spine issues and start treating their spine, and their hand feels better. I honestly had no idea that that's part of what that causes that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm learning yeah. something here. Yeah, the spine, I mean, it's not called carpal tunnel when it's yeah. a pinched nerve in the neck, but um, it's really just a, a neck uh, a cervical radiculopathy. Okay. Um, so just radicular symptoms coming from a pinched nerve in your neck radiating down. And so, but if it's a true carpal tunnel, then it's just you have the strain there. From all the bending and uh, anybody who's working with their hands all day, yeah. um, they're more at risk for carpal tunnel because they're, you know, any kind of, you know, especially technicians who are working on diesel um, trucks yep. can can get that a lot. Um, or if somebody's typing, especially if their wrists are bent. So you want to be neutral. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I went to try to find like the most, you know, most keyboards are flat. I went yeah. to try to find one, like the most curve I could get to it. Okay. And when I was in my 20s, I hated those keyboards. And now yeah. I'm like, every keyboard I got, I'm like, okay, it yeah. feels more comfortable for me now because yeah. of that. Yeah. You want your wrist to be neutral, not bent down, but you also don't want it to be extended. So I don't know if y'all can see, but um, you want it to be neutral, just okay. straight. So you're saying most of the time that's coming from the neck. Yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah. It, and, and what... Why does that happen? Is it improper sitting? Is yes. it just genetics? What, what, what's going on there? It is improper sitting posture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, when you're flexed down, um, your spine is mainly in kind of a, a flexed or, or curved downwards. And that usually causes the discs to bulge backwards. And when they bulge backwards, they pinch on the nerves. And then you start getting nerve pain, which is numbness, tingling, um, weakness, different pain that shoots down to different parts of the arm and hand, depending on which nerve is being pinched. 
Wow. I, I honestly had no idea that my, yeah. my carpal tunnel could be from could me be from. sitting improperly. Yeah. So we had you come out to one of our, our facility, our headquarters, the yeah. last building, not this one. Yeah, in Gilbert. Yep, in Gilbert. And you went around, took photos of everybody <laughs> and wrote up some stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think one person in our company actually had good posture. Yeah, and her dad had been a chiropractor, <laughs> so she had learned how to sit right. So what do you usually see when people are not sitting properly at their desk? Or what are, what are some things yeah. they should do to have proper posture? So there's two main ways that people sit wrong. One is slouching forward, so their upper body comes down. The other one is their hips are way forward, and then their upper body is way back. Way back. Yep. So either way, the spine is flexed, curved down. So to correct it, you go ahead and you want your low back to arch in. You might as well do it. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> and so when you arch your low back in, then you'll feel that it's a little bit more neutral, meaning straight and aligned, and then your chest is up a little bit. So your alignment is going to be ear, shoulder, and hip. Okay. So with yeah, those I are do, aligned, you'll you be... You know, now that you said it, like as I was sitting here, I definitely <laughs> I definitely am not aligned as I'm Ear, sitting there. Your shoulder and hip. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, wait, wait. So Robert, don't move. Robert's behind the scenes. Can you, can you see on, it all Robert, from this Ear, angle at all? Well, <laughs> 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 That's better. <laughs> Well, you know, so the one person at our company that was sitting right, I noticed she had like some thing behind her back. Yes. And what yeah. what is going on there? Why, so, why was she doing that? Yeah, you want a lumbar roll. Um, and it doesn't have to be fancy and expensive. They make different ones. But the ones we use the most is just it looks like a cylinder-shaped firm pillow. Um, so the about five inches in diameter, about maybe eight or nine inches long. And you put it in your lower back. Yeah, I'm sitting straight. I'm yeah. yeah, so you put it in your lower back right where that – natural curve is and you sit at the back of your chair with that lumbar support right behind your lower back and then ideally you want your upper back to stay vertical um, and then if there's a time where you need to sit forward in your chair you just slide forward to the front of the chair but you still want the same alignment yeah so that neutral ear shoulder hip so what I noticed too, a lot of our like 20 year olds that were in the photos, they got yeah. like one leg up on the armrest yeah. or they're sitting on one leg with one leg on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Is that, that, was... is, that, is, that, is, that is that just you're, you're 20 and invincible at that age? Is that is that what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, I think because they sit all day, they just get a little, they must get tired of sitting. So, I mean, do any of them use standing desks? That might be better. You know, we do have one or two employees that have asked for standing desks. Yeah. Um, they typically be managers. And I, I will say I yeah. walk in their office and I see them quite often at the standing, standing desk. Yeah. And that's better than sitting, I'm assuming? So most people, when they stand, they stand with better posture than when they sit. So um, that's why most people with back issues, um, neck and lower back issues, they have less pain with standing and walking and more pain with sitting. So a lot of times if you came for therapy and you say, um, my neck and my arm feels terrible when I sit, it feels much better when I walk around. Well, I know, OK, it's a spine issue. It's probably a disc issue and you have some pinched nerves. So it kind of like can categorize what you have. Yeah. I can imagine the hard thing is habit, right? People have been sitting the same way. Like I've yeah. been sitting the same way probably since yeah. forever. Yeah. That's gotta be the hard thing yeah, to get people just practice again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Low back in. Yeah. It's just it's just practice and making sure you're paying attention, I guess. Yeah. Is there any other tricks so, you can think of to help people? Um you want to remind yourself, so maybe have a photo of good posture. I give my patients, you know, especially my spine patients, give them a little picture of what good posture looks like, including that back roll um, support behind them. And then so they could put that at their office at the desk. Um, you can have that roll and just hook it onto your chair so that you don't forget. So it's just, you know, it's strapped on. Um, the McKenzie roll is the one I recommend the most because uh, they have the extra firm and it's just it comes with a strap and LeBron. James uses it actually. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it works if yeah. LeBron uses yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's probably trying to prevent back issues. <laughs> yeah. I could, you know, honestly, those athletes will go to the ends of the earth yeah. to make sure their body lasts as long as possible yeah. for everything. And yeah, um, I know, I know, you know, obviously, a very sad story with Kobe Bryant just passing away in the yeah. helicopter. But yeah. you know, the reason he did that was he said he couldn't sit that long in a car uh -huh. ride for hours in traffic. Yeah. And his body just was, he knew it was going to deteriorate his body. So it was more of a, mm -hmm. a thing for him to not have to deal with that that issue that wow. happened so much. So, yeah. Um, all right. So if people are listening to this and here, here's my theory, by the time somebody hits the age 40, they almost always have either back problems mm -hmm. or they have knee problems. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if, if people are, 
at their desk and they they know they got shoulder or neck yeah. or, or wrist problem. What, what are just some one-on-one things they should do to try to or some resource or what, what, what yeah. should they do, I guess? So uh, first, I would recommend get pick up a lumbar roll. Um, they cost about $20 on Amazon um, or McKinsey. They sell the rolls at optp.com. Those are the rolls that we use at the clinic. Um, but any cylinder shape, firm roll, or even just bring a large bath towel or like a little blanket and you just roll it up and put it right there. Um, so just okay. having that cylinder behind you will remind you a little bit. And then you can just do posture corrections. So. Okay. Just, yeah. yeah, just yeah get you the, just, just keep repeating. Just, yeah. okay. And that's going to help you with your muscle memory that okay. you're teaching the muscles that are doing the correction and keep repeating that. Um a really good chair will help because if the chair is not supportive enough or not firm enough or doesn't have a you know a, a back angle that's straight, then you're more likely to sink back down. Okay, so if you're sitting at your if you have a desk job and that's what you do all day long, how often should you be getting up and moving around? Uh, and w- once or twice an hour. Oh, well, that often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get up. And if you can take a call in standing or you know, like I know your sales guys, I saw some of them walking around. The yeah. office yeah. while they're taking a call. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you can do you know a phone call or something, um, standing position, or just walk you know walk across the hall. You know you don't have to stop and talk to everybody if you're busy. <laughs> but um, but yeah, just get up and move around or just stand up at least. Okay, so if you're just standing up, there's or, or taking that break. What are some stretches that people should do in okay. order to just kind of help with the whole thing? So the best one for the low back in standing is going to be back bend. So okay. you ready? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do it. She's going to show me some back bends here. I think she's going to make me do them actually. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and get in the get in the camera here. Okay. So hands here. All right. And then you bend back as far as you can. Yeah, I'm not very flexible. And then come back to the middle, and repeat. So Just, yeah, so you'll do at least ten or fifteen, um, like that. And try to do that every hour or two, or at least every every two to three hours during the workday. All right, very good. Let's put the low back. This, you're the first guest to actually make me get off my chair to do yes. something, which is which is great. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about another function inside the truck repair industry, yeah. and that's diesel technicians. Yeah. So diesel techs, they are on creepers underneath trucks on their back. Yeah. They're on weird angles. They're lifting, you know, 30, 40, 50 pound starters and brake drums and, mm-hmm. and doing all kinds of stuff. So what are, and let me just give my quick experience as a service manager. Uh, when they're in their 20s, they're invincible. They're, they're jumping down from frame rails that are three feet up in the <laughs> air. They're, they don't care what body angle they go in. Usually by the time they're 30, they're starting to feel some pain and having to do some Advil every day or Tylenol. Yeah, sure. um, and by the time they're 40, they're really looking at that guy that's 50 that can hardly move or has a mm-hmm. limp or his knees are killing him, yeah. thinking, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Right? So in that industry where it's very physical and you're moving around in different positions, what should those types of people really be doing to, A, protect their bodies so they're they're able to walk when they're 60. Yeah. And what are some things they should kind of do as like just maintenance one-on-one stretches or yeah. whatever it may be? So first of all, it's really not ideal to bend your back a lot, um, bending forwards. So if you can, if there's any time that you're reaching down, it's possible for you to squat. I know that then some, you know, you might be reaching in a weird way and it's impossible to keep your back straight. But a lot of times you might be just able to squat down um, with your spine straight and then be able to reach whatever low object you're reaching um, through squatting instead of bending. So the less you can bend your back, the your low back, uh, the more the low back will be protected. And getting under the equipment if you're on your back um, is actually fine because your back is supported and your spine is straight. So then you're mainly using your arms. Um, so the one thing I would say it would be the most important is to avoid bending your back as much as possible. And then if you realized you just had to bend for the past hour because it was just an awkward thing that you were fixing, yeah. then try to do some back bends or some something like that um, to make your back go the other way, backwards. Um, and most of our patients, 70% of back patients respond to backwards um, extension exercises. So I teach extensions a whole lot in the clinic. Um, I would say really prepare for work um, if you have a physical job like that. So you should probably be going to the gym a couple times a week and just staying, you know, active, um, you know, knowing if you need really strong arms, really strong legs for that kind of, you know, physical job. It's like being an athlete. You need to prepare for it. So um, you should be doing some strength training. Um, a good posture is something that affects, you know, more than you realize, because when you're not fixing machines, you might be sitting at home watching TV for four hours. And if your posture is bad, then that's doing damage, too. 
So um, body mechanics mainly try to avoid bending and twisting. I mean, sometimes you have to twist. So like I said, try to undo the damage. If you just realize you were twisting to the right for two hours, <laughs> then you, I think it's kind of an instinct, but you might want to go the go other the way, other way <laughs> yeah. and try to kind of counter, counter force because the spy, if one thing is being stretched, you know, it's going to work in opposites. If, you know, if the front of, for example, your biceps is on a stretch, then the triceps is shortened. When the triceps is stretched, the biceps are shortened. So they work in opposite. So you have to remember, okay, you need to find balance between the one side and the other. Yeah. So one of our good sales reps, David Martin, um, and I, I mentioned earlier, he has an episode coming up here that we're releasing soon, but he just came out with this new tool. And, and in the truck world, you know, your tires are pretty tall, you know, three feet yeah. tall, you know, 24 inch, you know, uh, diameter and all that. Um, on just the wheels, but what he came up with is this, this, uh, step that it goes on, it attaches to the top of the tire uh -huh. because a lot of these guys are trying to climb up on these tires that are yeah. three feet tall, right. um, or they're trying to like bend over it. And it's just really problematic. And yeah. a lot of injuries also happen in yeah. truck shop environments because you're in those weird positions. It's heavy equipment. Yeah. Everything's greasy and oily. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you're just doing a lot of repetitive motion, especially with torque wrenches and everything. Yeah. I know a lot of those guys have just wrist yeah. problems yeah. from doing all that. <laughs> um, is, is there anything you can do to, if you do a lot of repetitive motion, is there anything you can really do to help alleviate or prevent yourself from getting carpal tunnel or some wrist issues? Yeah, and they, they are definitely at higher risk for the true carpal tunnel and not just the neck issue. Um, so you want to strengthen the wrist. I mean, wrist extension would be a, a big one um, because a lot of people do more force or more damage um, when they're flexed and turned. So the more you can kind of extend throughout the day or extend maybe kind of pull. I can see there. Yep. Pull back on your fingers um, there. So yeah. that would be a good stretch. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to the gym, uh, yeah, and you know you need to have strong forearms and wrists and hands, then you should be doing some of those, you know, uh, yeah. the exercises that someone like me wouldn't necessarily do in the gym, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, again, it's a it's a it's a tough world for diesel technicians. It can be it can be hard on them um, because there's the shop guys, there's the mobile guys that are on trucks. I mean, those guys don't even get to be in a shop. They get to go mm -hmm. driving a truck all day. Yeah. Then they roll up in a field somewhere or the side <laughs> of a road, right. and then they get to go do Fix. their, their same yeah. thing. So it's it's a it can be difficult. Yeah. Um, but the other big group we really haven't talked about is truck drivers. Yeah. These guys have it tough because they're expected to go drive their eight to ten hours a day. Yeah, at least. And yeah, yeah, and they're they're in a truck. So mm -hmm. what do those guys do? Like, how, how do they possibly have that problem? Because I talked to a lot of truck drivers over the years, and they all seem to have back, neck, yeah. shoulder pains sure. of, of some type if yeah. they've been doing it for a while. Yeah, I do see that a lot. So um, number one, just make sure you have enough support in your chair. So if it's just too soft, kind of uh, too wide, and, uh, you know, they don't make chairs really ideal um, in the car. So make sure you have enough support, but very firm support. So you don't want to just buy a cushion that's super soft to put in it. It needs to be really firm. And then you do want to get a lumbar support. So one of those um, cylinder-shaped cushions, a lumbar roll, and and you can also get one for the upper back. So you could put one horizontally behind your lower back and get another one for vertical. And you put that to support your upper back. Okay. Um, so at least you're a little bit more neutral when you're driving. And then you want to stop every, well, if you're driving for 10 hours in a day, I would say stop every two hours. Yeah. Um, if you're just driving like five hours, if I have a patient, I might tell them to stop every one and a half hours. But realistically, try to stop every two hours. And when you stop, if you're going to eat it, you know, eat something, um, maybe eat while standing instead of sitting and then try to walk around Yeah. when you break. Is there anything they, they can do while they're driving? Is there any safe <laughs> stretches yes. so or anything? so you can do, yeah, you can do overcorrects. So you're holding here, but I don't know if you see from the side. Yeah. But while you're driving, that overcorrect posture exercise. Yeah. Um, so you can do that. And then you can do some uh, kind of chin tucks. So your head comes backwards. Okay. So... Those would be good ones yep. while driving. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's a really difficult world. I know you're in the physical therapy side, and it's it's probably hard to get in front of those business owners and encourage them to be productive or, or preventative with yeah. their employees. Yeah. Do you typically find companies are preventative with their employees, or is it just kind of, well, we're going to deal with the workman comp claims as they come through the Most pipeline? Most of them are not, um, unfortunately. So... One of the things I like to tell people with um, with my business and pain talks and any other prevention business is um, you might spend a little bit of an investment in prevention, um, but that's going to save you a lot of money in the workers' comp claims, product, productivity issues, 
um, and just keeping good employees. So if somebody gets hurt, they're not going to be your employee for very long, more than likely. Um, so, so invest in that prevention. It's really a small investment compared to what you'll save because if you think about one person getting hurt, a major back injury, and you know that would be hundreds of thousands of dollars if they need surgery and lots of rehab, and you know, um, and usually that's going to be after they've done injections and chiropractic care and a lot of different medications. So there's a lot of costs. So I mean, pretty much you can save one injury more than pays for your prevention. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it goes back to just taking care of yourself and doing the right things. And, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, I, I'm not trying to blame high school here or college or anything like that. But I always say there's a lot of things I wish they taught me growing up. Yeah. Uh, nutrition would have been a great one. I know I took yeah. health classes. Maybe they taught me that. And I just skipped all those classes. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, financial, finance. Fi finance. Yeah. Most people don't know yeah. how to budget. And they just go far yeah. into debt and, yeah. and make bad decisions. And, yeah. you know, you got you got 18-year-olds making, uh, you know, $100,000 college decisions, not really thinking about the consequences. Yeah. Crazy. And, again, the, the physical side of it as well yeah. and the benefits. Um because now that I've aged, <laughs> I can definitely say there's yeah. some things I wish I would have done a little bit better, yeah. you know, back then. Yeah, the sooner you can learn, um, yeah, I don't know much about the, all the finance and the, everything <laughs> else, but in my area, the sooner you can learn good posture. So if I have a patient who's very young, maybe they had a car wreck and we start treating their back, I'm like, it's kind of good that you're learning this now because now from now on, you know how to sit with good posture and you've practiced it. You know, repetition is key. So once you learn it and just really practice over and over and then you get to the point you know, like me, where this is comfortable to sit right. <laughs> I, I promise you I'm going to work on it. <laughs> I'm actually going to buy one of those roll things tonight. Yeah. So I need those at both. It, it's weird. I have the same chair at home and the same chair at work. But the one at work, I think it's because my desk is higher. Like yeah. my, my lower back just, it, it feels fine. But the second I stand up, it is horrible for about 30 uh, seconds and yeah. then it goes away. Yeah, yeah. But if I sit straight... It tends to it, 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 yeah, it doesn't tend to happen. Yeah, so, so that when you when you're flex, it just tends to get those derangements where something gets out of place. So if you can sit right, you're preventing the derangement from happening, but you're not deranged. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, Liz, I really want to thank you for coming onto the show here. Thanks. Uh, if someone wants to get a hold of you and, and learn more or talk to you, and I know you offer services out there, and I know you you do talks and yeah. uh, evaluations and and all kinds of stuff. What are what are some of the ways they can get a hold of you? Yep, my um, website is www.paintalks. Um, talks like we talk about pain. Yep. <laughs> um, paintalks.org. Okay, awesome. And I know you're obviously on LinkedIn as well, so hopefully yeah, they can yeah. they can track you down yeah, there. Yeah, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm on. Um, I mean, it's it's my. Pretty much the front page of my website will give you my email address if you if you need to reach me. And I think I might have butchered your name a little bit, right? Because I, I I asked you before how do I say it, and you said no. Well, there's another way you can say it, right? So how what's, yeah, what's the so in I guess in English you would say Navarrete, and in Spanish Navarrete. Y si sí, hablo español. <laughs> I am not there at all with my Spanish. I won't even try to butcher that. So again, Liz, thank you for coming on the show. For anybody else that's listening to this, obviously talk to Liz. She knows what she's doing when it comes to this kind of stuff. If you're interested in being on the DL and coming in to talk with us, just email the DL at diesellaptops.com. And for now, we're going to call it an episode. Again, Liz, thanks for being on here. Thank and you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And a great episode. And thank you to all our listeners and watchers. And we'll have another episode coming up shortly. Thank you. Thank you.